man, you're just so, oh, that's something from a movie. Ah, preacher, that's never going to happen. But it's right here in the Word. Jesus does not want, I was raised in a place where it was, it was almost told like God was looking to catch me. I mean, God was like, I spy, had a trench coat on, had a, a hat on, man, with the bill broke down, always peeping around the corner with a magnifying glass looking, you know, catch Stephen. You know what I'm saying? It was like God was always looking for me. But I have soon learned that God is not looking to find me in sin. He paid the price for my sin. And he don't want to catch you slipping eternally either. No, he don't want. But people, because they're not ready, it's going to catch them unaware. What? You mean what? And it's going to be too late. That's why he says if you're on the housetop, you can't come down. Because when the tribulation, when the wrath starts, ain't nothing you can do. But he tells us, he says, you're not of the night. He wasn't just playing word games with us. Like, don't worry, little homie. You'll be all right. No, he was like saying, you're not of the darkness, but of the day. Let us be sober and not be like them of the night. Who? They are drunken. What are they drunken on? The world. They're drinking the Kool-Aid in the world. They don't care about all of this. This doesn't mean anything to them. And so he's telling us, don't, don't you have that. It, oh, I don't care. God got me anyway. No, he don't. Because if that evil servant begins to say in his heart, the Lord delayeth his coming and begin to run with the wicked, and you can do that. You know, you can go through a season where you just say, I, I got to go with this. See? And yeah, at that time, that's what some people are going to be doing. John Darby in 1827, I'm hearing, stay with me. He, in 1827, 1830, is one of the ones that started the pre-rapture. But nobody knows because nobody cares to know. You just make the scripture say what it want to say. All I know is these people said it. This is where I learned it. But do you know it for yourself? Like some people think they're saved, but they only know they're saved because their mama told them that God love them and he's going to use them one day. It's the same kind of fickleness about an eternal thing. John Darby in 1827, you look it up. That's where it began to come from. Margaret MacDonald, Glasgow, Scotland. She took it, and they took it, and it became part of the foundation of teaching that spread throughout the land. And then Schofield. Remember that Bible? Some of you might remember I had a Bible. The dude came back and took it off my one Sunday. It was a Schofield Bible. Maybe the Lord was doing me a favor. Trying to tell me then, God, trying to tell you something, and I didn't get it. I'm crying because the boy took my Bible. But it was a Schofield Bible. But in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, it's, it's some of the great, uh, the body is divided over these scriptures. And let's go there quickly. Amen. Stay with me here. Say amen sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Daniel 9, 24. 227. I'm not going to read all of it, but it's about the 70 weeks. And what this is, is telling us about the final seven year period. This is about the final seven year period. And that's really, I wrote my notes to myself. There's no need for division, but pastorally important for establishing the saints. Wouldn't you want to know about the final seven year period? I mean, I, I had a visitation in my office that day and I said the number seven came up there and it, I ain't never paid any attention my clock is still set at seven I, you know for me God is telling me something but we ain't going on my my uh my vision and all of that what we need to know that how close are we to the last seven years some of you want to get older than you are add seven to your number is that good enough you you, you fine with that Seven to whatever number you are? Get serious, don't it? That'll make me 73. You think, well, that's enough. You ought to be satisfied. Well, you ought to be satisfied with 34, too. <laughs> Tell me when to get satisfied. Yeah, yeah, live, live. You be satisfied with your 43. Okay. Premillennium, what is it? We should know. You know what kind of car you got. You know what kind of engine you got. You know whether you got a four-cylinder, six-cylinder, eight-cylinder, don't you? Post-millennial. Uh, Pre-millennial. We should know it. It's, th these doctrines are so important, but the average Christian is not. It's, I'm not trying to embarrass us because I haven't always known them, 
but the fact that we don't want to know them. We got to be like Bereans. Okay, I've heard about it. Now, what is it? Because these going to affect how you walk before God. When you start thinking pre-millennium uh, or you think pre-tribulation, which is not on this page, but pre-tribulation, it'll change the way you prepare yourself. You start thinking, well, I may have to learn how to go through some stuff. Then you can't call home crying mama every time somebody don't, don't like you. You can't quit. You can't quit just because people don't agree with you. Amen. And there's a lot of people looking back, falling away. Post premillennium is the doctrine of Jesus returning back to the earth before the millennium. And again, I'm just trying to show you. It's not enough for you and I to know and feel good about, oh, I know, we know, I'm good. But most of the world, they don't have a clue about what the millennium is or how important it is to their existence. You can't live forever, ma'am, sir. You got to die. The millennium is important. The millennium is a thousand years when Jesus comes to reign on the earth himself, just like Obak was president for four, eight years. Jesus would be sitting. Donald was president. Donald Trump was four years. Jesus is going to do it for a thousand. And this gonna, the world going to be shook up. You need to understand. And on his way coming, he gonna be, his, his garments, by the time he get to Jerusalem, his garments going to be covered with blood where he done stomped his way to Zion. See, that's another part. We think, well, he's just going to come in the cloud and grab us, but Jesus is going to stomp his way all the way to Zion, man, beating down his enemies and all the unbelievers. And, and while his angels are reaping, and I don't have time to show you all this so you don't have to take my word for it. Do your own research. Just kind of hitting you real quick. Jesus is stomping his way, warring. Read Zephaniah, Obadiah. I know those are your favorite books. But it talks about how he, he comes and he, he annihilates his enemies. When it talks about his, his vesture dipped in blood, we just read that like, oh, ain't that cute? He got on red like Terrence. Oh, everybody else got on white, but Jesus going to have this red on. Oh, that is distinguish him. He read because he's stomping his enemies. He's swinging his sword all the way to his throne. He's doing like David. Man, David was a bloody man. David was his father. He's not just assailing. He could just come in and assail, but he's going to come in a certain way. Okay, parts that you ain't heard. Post-millennium, eschatology, the interpretation of Revelation 20 occurring after the millennium. I gave you a few of the church fathers. Now, these are people that Paul, the apostles, they taught. They would be what you would call the guys that took over after they were killed. Hipp Hippolytus, you can look it up. Ignatius, these are church fathers. And what do you find, Justin Martyr? What you find is these people never believed in a pre. Bye, sister. God bless you. These people never believed in a pre-tribulation rapture. Stay with me. I'm finishing. They never believed in a pre-tribulation rapture because they believed that uh, the saints were going to be martyred. Irenaeus, AD, uh, uh, AD uh, 130. You know, Paul lived uh, AD 100. So these are the, study, the people who study under them, Greek bishops and people who established Christian communities. I can get them to you later. Schofield Study Bible was called the Devil's Bible. Now, you don't know a Bible except for the Catholic Douay Bible that anybody say stay away from. But the Schofield Study Bible, was called the Devil's Bible because it actually changed some some of these doctrines that I'm one of these doctrines, but this is one of them. And people, uh, this is where this came in. And, and you ain't that old. You wasn't born 1827, 1830. It's just like people get all tripped up about Sunday school, like Sunday school been around forever. Sunday school only came in the land about 1850, 1856. Now we act like Jesus is the one say, go to Sunday school. You know, we keep a Sunday school going, ain't but three people there. Tradition. The Western church is the only group of people that believe that we are never going to suffer anything. We're just going to go from a wily world to heaven. No one stumbles into pre-tribulation teaching unless taught. Somebody had to teach you that. And they was so excited about it, and you was like me. It's like. Engine you. 
we have failed. We should have made the people strong for persecution. And the people are not strong for persecution because the doctrine we preach is weak. People are not strong for persecution. They can't handle persecution in here. Somebody roll their eyes at you. She had a crook in her neck, man. She was just trying to move her, get, get in a comfortable position. She roll her eyes at me. Anybody roll their eyes at you? The word for witness in Greek is martias, which means martyr. We are called to be martyrs. We are, I'm a witness. You call to be a martyr. But we don't, he didn't really mean that. Now, he didn't mean it like that. He mean for the first Christian, but not me. I, I'm not me. He nails, so I got to get my nails done. Somebody talking about me. You know, we are all about that. My stockings, I didn't come up in here to get on my knee. I got my new stockings on. All that. We are martyrs. So how God going to have all them people get killed like that, slaughtered like that? Some of them were sewn up in animals, in, in animal skins, and thrown out there for the lions to take apart. Children, were, they would kill the children to get the parents to recant. But, but God is going to take us all, man, in a sinful state because, I mean, we've been brainwashed, hoodwinked, run amok. Man, something, something wrong with the picture. Israel, right there in the middle, you see the star. But all those nations around Israel is the enemies that the Lord is going to stomp, crucify on his way to the throne. And we won't go into the depths of that right here because I'm hearing out of here. But if you read Psalm 83, Psalm 83 tell you about those nations. But the Bible was written about the people in that area. It wasn't written, written for Rome, Europe, it, uh, or for America, the Western. It was written there. And the Antichrist is going to more than likely, we'll talk about it, going to come out of those nations. See? But America, we could see them getting, uh, uh, synagogues getting blowed up over there, and we just say, oh, you, well, you hear about them? Ooh, they come in and shot a bunch of Jews with AK-47. Okay. What's for dinner? You know? Because we, we're, we're isolated, but it's just how the enemy is going to get multitudes of people because if we thought they were coming up in, in our churches, and I'm not wishing on this for this, but if we thought we had to pray about our faith, we'd be Oh, the Lord will take care of me. And then the Bible says, don't be like the sluggard who know how to stow up. Don't be, uh, don't be a sluggard. Be like the ant who knows how to store up. But listen, listen. We are hollering about the Lord saying, get water, get water. But oh, I don't need no water. That's the pastor and them, them. They just so excited about this. We're going to be the rapture going to come get us. 
Like there ain't somebody in the world ain't got no water. They going through tribulation in Kenya. The whole village standing around there waiting on the water to come out the ground. Folk ain't took a bath in so long. No, they need a bath. But we can't, we can't conceive that. And yet the Lord's trying to warn us. Not stock up out of fear. Stock up like you're supposed to save money in the bank. Somebody tell you, don't spend all your money, save it. You say, oh, Lord, I'm saving money, and God is just blessing me, and I'm ready if something go down. But then when it comes to doing that so you can help your brother, you just eat it all till it's all gone. If Walmart shut down, you're going to know tribulation. You better pray for Mr. Walmart, dear. They don't, if you, you're going to know the whole country going to know tribulation. Oh, Lord, it's hard time, you know. Matthew 24 and 9. Go there quickly. Come on. You need to go home. When, is, when, when did you plan to go to heaven? I, I mean, do you, do you know? Are you working on that? Do you know? I'm, I'm going to go when my pastor told me. Well, boy, he going to hell. That's something you're going to have to work out on your own. I'm saying, you know, let's just say you ain't going to die. COVID ain't going to get you and nothing else going to get you. Come on. Look at 24 and 9 of Matthew. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and you shall be, they shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for the name's sake. Then, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, shall hate one another. Sound like today. Many false prophets shall arise. Sound like today. And shall deceive many. Sound like today. If I was trying to deceive you, I wouldn't be trying to tell you that maybe the road ain't as soft as you think it is to glory. John chapter 7, there's a multitude that, that came out of great tribulation. If the church is raptured before this, then the church ain't invited to that party. Amen. The martyrdom witness would be missing in the last generation. So all these people, John said, who is these people? These are people who came out of great tribulation. So, so the Lord uh, uh, raptured all these people out. Then all these people went through great tribulation for the Lord Jesus Christ. A multitude which no man could number. But, oh, but that's just, that's the Jews. That's not the Jews. There's no soul sleep like the Jehovah Witness teach. You know, you just go to sleep and the Lord wake you up and then, you know, give you another chance. You can fix it up. You got a better opportunity, but you haven't been asleep. That's a lie. The unrighteous will not be given a second chance. You got to be Berean. Can you say Amen. All right, now I'm going to throw this at you real quick because I know I'm, I'm out of time. And so I'm going to just put it to you like this. Even though I've read it for years and years and years, uh, sometimes the Lord just stares, stares the stuff up. But what, do you know about, what do we know about the seal judgments and the trumpet judgments? Most folks don't even want to get in the book. They have something to do with when the Lord is coming. I mean, wouldn't you kind of like want to know when the Lord's coming? I would want to know if... Oh, I think the movie Aretha's in town, man. I, we, I was talking about that. And I was excited. That's a carnal thing. Ain't got nothing to do with my salvation. When certain events is coming, the Cardinals is coming to town, the, the Michael Jordan them, the team is coming. Yeah, they're coming in the fall. They're coming, they're coming. The seal judgments, they have to do with when the Lord could come, I believe. I believe that we need to. Don't, don't take my word for it. I believe we need to pay attention between the fourth and fifth seal. Let's go there real quickly just to whet your appetite because, see, you ain't heard, you ain't heard that in a minute, between the fourth and fifth seal. See, the seal judgments are not wrath. He just, they're just the seal judgment. Jesus opens the seal, uh, opens the seal and loose them. Nobody in the world was qualified, holy enough to do it. A lamb that was slain was the only one worthy. Then he starts talking about these seals. The first seal, a horseman rode. The second seal, a horseman rode. The third seal, a horseman rode. Revelations chapter uh, yeah, Revelation 6. And the lamb opened one of the seals. That's the first one. And I heard, as it were, uh, a noise of thunder. One of the four beasts said, come and see. And I saw him behold a white horse. And he that sat up him, him had a bow, a crown up on him. And he went forth to conquer. Then it goes through the various seals. The second seal 
it talks about uh, 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 the, the second seal was a red horse. The third seal was a black horse. But then <clears throat> notice here, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death and hell followed him. And power was given unto him over part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now, what I want to tell you here, and I'm rushing really fast right here. These are not, this is not the wrath of God. But I was taught it was. And a whole lot of you was taught it was. This is just the seal judgment, and the Lord ain't the one doing the judging. He's just doing the revealing. That's why it's called the revelation. He's telling you he how it's going to go down. He's prophesying to all of us. That's why it says, blessed is he that heareth and he that readeth the words of this book. Because no other book says that. Because it's going to change how you think about your eternal salvation. And those seals, uh, judgments are going to happen. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. And for the testimony which were held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long? And white robes were given unto them. And then the rest, uh, they were told that they should rest for a little while until their fellow servants and also their brethren should be killed as they were. Okay. Suppose some Christians are going to be killed before the rapture come. I mean, we, we just had been ready to even wrap our mind around it, that the Lord would do us like that. But every other generation was done like that. But this generation just says it won't happen. You don't have to take my word for it. I wish I could send this to you. But these, these scriptures, and I took time to write them out because Matthew says the same thing about the white horse. Mark says it and Luke. Matthew says the same thing about the red horse. Mark and Luke. The black horse is not stated that way, but the pale horse is in there. Verse, and then the fifth seal is about souls, souls under the altar. Daniel uh, has something to say to correspond. Daniel, Matthew, and Revelation say the same thing about on the day of the Lord, when the day come, that it's not like a lot of us been told that it's just a howdy duty day for the world for seven years. Until the man of sin come and then he start killing them because they got the mark of the beast, ain't got the mark of the beast. There's a lot more to it than that. And we have failed, a lot of us. And I'm probably doing a bad job on how I'm closing this. But as a Christian, if we're studying our Bible, we, we're supposed to know exactly what's going on. Are we supposed to have at least an uh, 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 inkling that we ask the Lord Jesus, Lord, please show me so I don't miss it? Because the thing that's going to cause us to miss it, the Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Woe to those who are at ease in Zion. And what the pre-rapture has done for a lot of us is cause us to be at ease in Zion. It, it, it really does. It has called us to be at ease. And yet, I don't think the Bible supports it like we think it supported. it. Because we heard it, and we haven't tried to study many of us anything since we heard it. And you know it's the truth. My preacher told me, somebody told me, and that's all I know. But what if you got to stay here until the man of sin be revealed, they're falling away and the man of sin be revealed, like the Bible says, okay? That's the Antichrist who does a seven-year covenant. It's not seven years of tribulation anyway, which is what I've said and a lot of people say because that's what we've been taught. It's three and a half years of tribulation. The Bible tells you it's 42 months, 1,260 days. Then that 1,260 days is going to have another 30 days uh, added on to it. Uh, 45 days, it'll come up to 1,290 days uh, for, for whatever reasons on different, Trump, uh, different uh, trumpet judgments. But it's not seven years of tribulation. It's the 70th week of Daniel. He makes the covenant, but the covenant starts. That's why you need to pay attention. Why you checking the news? You need to be checking the news and say, let me see if they sign the covenant today. When they sign that covenant, Lord, the, the, the clock go tick tock, and you can set your clock by almost by it right there. Seven years and 30 days later from when they signed that treaty, Jesus is going to be on the earth.
And the rapture has to occur somewhere in between that. But all I'm trying to get you to understand that if they signed it today, half of your kinfolk, all of mine, all your friends, they would know and, and would think that you being too excitable about, man, you excited. Calm down. God got you. God got you. But you're supposed to be praying. You're supposed to be trying to get them in. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ because it's okay if I'm wrong that we get out of here early. That's good. But suppose I ain't. Then all you said, brother, you was wrong. Look at us. We on the bus. We are. We out of here. We out of here. You stay if you want. I'm. No, I'm going with you. I ain't gonna be too proud. But the fact is, a whole lot of people think they got 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 time. You ain't got time. Y'all ain't never been in sin, have you? You know how long it take you to get out sometimes. I'm serious. It's a mental thing, man. You be like, man, I ain't going back. Man, I'm done with that. Uh, man, then three months from now, oh, man, oh, man. You know what I'm saying? You be thinking, it, it's a false it's a false kind of, oh, I'm good. I'm good. God love me. I'm late. He never did stop loving you. But we have to learn how to overcome something so we can move on to the next thing from faith to faith. But then when you got people, they decide, I'm going to live for the Lord now. It, you can't just do it. No, no man can come to the Lord except the Spirit draw him. So that don't say you wait on God, but it says you got to pray and say, Lord, help me to receive grace. You know, God ain't like the, 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 the person that you can walk out the house and I don't love you no more. And then they let you come back. And like, I don't love you. God, you can, he don't do you. Man, if his grace don't draw you in, you can't find the faith to believe because he has to he has to give you the assurance by faith. And it ain't a feeling. You got to know from his word. Okay. 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 So you see, most of the world, most of the world in darkness right now, and they think they okay. And I'm not judging the world because I don't know the people I'm talking about, but I know the Bible when it says that most of the world think they're okay. But the bad part is that salt is lost his savor. And it's become good for nothing. The salt is the people, he said, have salt in yourselves. The people, we're supposed to be sprinkled on them and make them thirsty. Yeah, when they hear us, when they're around us, some on the job or whatever, they may not like you, but it's some about, man, you know what, I want to talk to you some more. I love chopping it up with you, you know, because you make them thirsty. But when you people don't, you you know, people don't, you don't, you supposed, we're supposed to be salt. You know, oh, I'm going to be sweet, I'm a Christian. You know, need to be salt, man. Be salt, and salt makes people thirsty. They want to drink the waters of life, and that's Jesus Christ. That's all he want to use you for. Ain't trying to be sweet. Everybody on the job like me. You ain't got to like me. I'm there to make money and go home to my family. But when I get a chance, God's going to send somebody my way, and I'm going to be salt to them. I was, and every chance they get, they, gonna, they break. They're going to sneak over there and won't talk to me about something. He do with you, too. It's salt. Somebody in your family. When they hear you coming, they shouldn't say, oh, man, they gonna here he is again. No, they, hey, what's up? What's up, man? What's up? Man, I have a revelation here. God been dealing with me. And then, man, that's good. So, unless they've hardened their heart. But he says, if the salt has lost its savor, it's good for nothing. That's why he gives us Lot's wife as an example. When she looked back, she turned into a pillar of salt. So she could say she, whatever, she wasn't good for, for nothing, good for the kingdom of God, because she would rather go back to Sodom. She left something in the house, or she left some friends that she would rather be at rather than go on to safety with God. And that's why this whole world, the people that don't love God, they're good for nothing. They're going to be destroyed, because they would rather be here in the world than to be with the Lord. All right, praise him. Come on, let's praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We come in your name. We want to be salt. Lord, we know these things uh, should not and will not separate us from being Christians because we don't have to believe 